the asiatic society in its voyage has been enriched through its association with the leading intellectuals of bengal in different phases the institution is indeed privileged to develop an endearing relationship with acharya prafullo chandra re the foremost among the pioneers of 19th century who had heralded awakening in bengal the asiatic society kolkata remembers acharya prafullo chandra with profound respect and admiration in a remote village raruli in the district of jesore prafullo chandra re was foremost of 19th century bengali intellectuals who succeeded in representing a fruitful synthesis of oriental wisdom and occidental scientific predilections despite a strong nationalist bent of mind he could realize since his adolescence that india under british subjugation needed development in science a feeling which inspired him to take admission in the university of edinburgh scotland in his quest for higher learning in science it is also an accepted fact that in the late 19th and early 20th century There was a surge of science education in India sponsored by British hegemony as a part of their imperialist practice despite his apathy towards british egoism and discriminatory attitude towards indians prafullo chandra's profound admiration for the progressive western civilization and support for western education and learning elicited his admiration towards the asiatic society of bengal which since its inception in 1784 had paved the way of promotion of oriental learning and at the same time inculcated modern enlightened western culture prudent and practical Prafullo Chandra could easily realize that though established by Sir William Jones a Britisher and nurtured by imperialists like Warren Hastings it was through the Asiatic society that global attention was first drawn towards India's rich cultural heritage its philosophy its literature mathematics medicine archaeology as well as the methodology of scientific investigation encompassing physics botany zoology meteorology etc occupied major areas of the society's activities 
It is obvious, therefore, that Profullo Chandra's preoccupation with science and his nationalist temperament will associate him with the society's activities. The Asiatic society, too, accorded him due recognition and showered on him several accolades. Thus, a mutual relationship cemented with respect and admiration for each other developed between Profullo Chandra and the Asiatic society. This relationship between Profullo Chandra, a scientist of international repute and a nationalist, and an entrepreneur on one hand, and the Asiatic society delving deep in its quest for knowledge on the other, this exhibition has been organized by the library section of the Asiatic society. On 15th January 1784, William Jones, a Puisne judge of the Bengal Supreme Court, a linguist and keen on exploring the hitherto unexplored arenas of knowledge of the vast Orient, passed a resolution for the establishment of the Asiatic society in the presence of 30 top-ranking elites of the European community. In his first anniversary discourse, delivered on 15 February 1784, Jones made it clear that side by side with inquiries about man and nature, science is also another important area of research for this academic institution. You will examine their improvements and methods in arithmetic and geometry, in trigonometry, mathematics, astronomy, and general physics, and their advancement, whatever it may be, in astronomy and chemistry. It is no wonder, therefore, that Profullo Chandra, the blossoming Indian chemist, with his experience of working in a Scottish university laboratory, will feel attracted towards this institution. As a matter of fact, since his boyhood, he nurtured admiration for Jones, as is revealed in his autobiography. Sir William Jones, John Leyden, and their linguistics attainments deeply impressed me. The answer of Jones, mother of his interrogations, read and you will know, also was not lost upon me. This sense of respect paved the way of a vibrant relationship between the Asiatic society established by Jones and Profullo Chandra. The Asiatic society had its new building in 1805 and research geared up in Indology and various branches of science. In 1814, the society decided to set up a museum under the supervision of Dr. Nathaniel Wallish. Geological and Indological specimens were collected and preserved. Another landmark achievement of the society in the field of science 
is the publication of weather reports since 1788 followed by meteorological observations. Simultaneously, articles on various branches of science were published in the pages of society's first journal, The Asiatic Researches. In 1829, Gleanings in Science, a thoroughly scientific journal was published where the editor had dedicated the volume to the members of the society in the laudable efforts made by them for the cultivation of science in India. It is evident that by the time when Prafullo Chandra returned from abroad, adorned with a degree in chemistry and joined Presidency College as a professor in chemistry in 1889, the Asiatic Society had already established itself as a premier institution in India in promoting scientific research. Chandra became a member of the society in 1890. This is the beginning of a long lasting relationship between Prafullo Chandra and the Asiatic society. Prafullo 
Chandra's research acumen initially flourished in the pages of the journals of the Asiatic Society. The fruits of his penetrating research in chemistry were published in the journals of the Asiatic Society at the beginning of his career as an innovative scientist. In his own words, The work undertaken does involve stupendous labor and I was busy with it for nearly three years and the result obtained were published in the Journal of the Asiatic Society of Bengal for 1894 entitled Chemical Examination of Certain Indian Food Stuffs Part 1 The Fats and Oils. Autobiography. The discovery of mercurous nitrate opened a new chapter in my life. This discovery of a novel compound and the circumstances which led to this path making discovery was published first in the Journal of the Asiatic Society. In this illuminating article, Prufullo Chandru describe the circumstances which led to this discovery. Having recently had occasion to prepare mercurous nitrate in quantity by the action of dilute acid in the cold on mercury, I was rather stuck by the appearances of a yellow crystalline deposit. A preliminary test proved, however, to be at once a mercurous salt as well as nitrate, the interesting component promise thus amply to repay an investigation. The illustrious science journal Nature 1896, though a bit sceptical about the quality of the journal of the Asiatic Society as a scientific journal, however mentioned this article by Profullo Chandra published in the journal of the society. The current number of Journal of Asiatic Society, however, contains a paper by Dr. P. C. Ray of the Presidency College, Calcutta on mercurous nitrate that is worthy of note. Pedler, the then president of the society, mentioned the significant achievement of Profullo Chandra published in the journal. The second paper in our journal on chemistry was on mercurous nitrate by Dr. P. C. Ray, who by his discovery of the method of preparation of this compound has filled up blank in our knowledge of the mercury series. While digging in the history of chemistry, Profullo Chandra felt that ancient Indian texts on chemistry preserved in manuscripts need to be explored. He was aware that in ancient India, alchemy was zealously pursued and there existed several treasures in Sanskrit on this subject. He first wrote introductory chapters of a Sanskrit text, Rasendra Sara Sangraha. But one evening in the Asiatic society changed the course of his life. In his own words, One evening while I was attending a meeting of the Asiatic Society of Bengal, my attention was directed to the current issue of the journal the savants lying on the table. An article by Barthelot motivated him and he made vigorous search of manuscripts on this topic. He mentioned Rajendralal Mitra's notices of Sanskrit manuscripts 
and finally the outcome of his research was published under the bibliotheca indica series of the asiatic society the rasaranavam or the ocean of mercury and other metals and minerals edited by p c ray and k c kobiratno 1910 Sharnavo Profullo Chandra took up a challenging task when he ventured to write a comprehensive history of Hindu chemistry in this painstaking research he unhesitatingly put on record his appreciation for the Asiatic Society library in his autobiography he stated as i was collecting materials for my hindu chemistry the library of the asiatic society of bengal was indispensable letters between profullo chandra and the asiatic society officials substantiates an extremely cordial relationship maintained by the asiatic society with profullo chandra the asiatic society preserves this letters as its treasured possession recognition of the scholarly achievements of profullo chandra the asiatic society awarded sir william jones gold medal to him in 1940 hmm. the asiatic society always nurtured profound respect and admiration for this illustrious personality as a mark of respect the asiatic society congratulated profullo chandra and sent him best wishes on his 80th birthday in a letter profullo chandra wrote I can assure you my dear sister that in serving my favorite science I have only one idea in my mind namely that through her I should serve my country god knows I have no other object in my life as a matter of fact profullo chandra epitomizes selfless devotion to science back by a strong nationalist idea to serve his countrymen his feeling is revealed in his statement i have no sense of success on any large scale in things achieved but have the sense of having worked and having found happiness in doing so
Prafullo Chandra combined in himself the inquisitive acumen of a modern scientist, the zeal of an institution builder by establishing Bengal Chemical and Pharmaceutical Works and a glowing patriotism which led him to protest against tyrannical British regime since his adolescence. Indeed, he was one of this, those men who never lived for himself. The Asiatic society condoled the demise of Prafullo Chandra by paying a glowing tribute to his life and activities. Sir Prafullo Chandra Re belongs to that class of great men who never die. The work which Sir P. C. Ray had left behind was imperishable. As time came, the people of Bengal and India would realize what great part he played in the making of the national life of his motherland. Just 50 years ago, Dr. Ray had sent his first paper to be published in the proceedings of the society dealing with the chemical examination of certain Indian foodstuffs. Half a century ago, he had felt the need for a more satisfactory scientific analysis of Indian foodstuffs, a problem which had been agitating the minds of Indian scientists today. Sir P. C. Ray was a great scientist. He was famous for having built a school for Indian chemistry, but his real greatness lay not merely in the fact that he had attained personal eminence, but in the fact that he knew the art of making other people great and eminent. Indeed, he was one of those men who never lived for himself. Whatever he did, he gave to the others and his great aim and ambition was to elevate his poor and unfortunate country. A man like Sir Prafullo Chandra Ray is not going to be born in India every day. His memory would remain fresh in the minds of his countrymen, not only for the present generation, but for generations yet unborn. The best way in which his countrymen can offer homage to this memory is to carry on dauntlessly the great work which he has begun. Asiatic Society Kolkata remembers Acharya Prafullo Chandra, a pioneer of 19th century awakening in Bengal with profound respect and admiration.